Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. All right, welcome to this uh, tutorial for the, the secret projects that I'm working on uh, on the Plus channel, uh, and that is Thousand Suns Chaos Space Marines. I thought I'd never collect Chaos, but then I saw these miniatures come out, and it was the perfect excuse to collect them. And they're so different to regular uh, Chaos Legions, you know, expecting the black kind of armor, the red, uh, that kind of theme. But with these, it's entirely different. So you can see. Uh, how beautiful the miniatures are. Uh, that's really the main reason why I wanted to collect these and something completely different to what I've got as well. Uh, and it'd be good to have Chaos represented on both of the channels also. So uh, in this video I'm going to show you this is one that I've already finished. Uh, this is the one that we're going to paint here in this video. Uh, but we're going to try and reach this standard here. So if you like the way that this miniatures come out, uh, even if you're not collecting Thousand Suns, uh, you may be able to apply this colour scheme to something else. Uh, but we're going to try and reach this standard in this video. Now you can see a lot of intricate work here. I've tried to develop a couple of techniques uh, and a few ways of saving time so these don't take uh, as long as they could do. There's a couple of key points in this video that will help you save a lot of time uh, and help you get still get nice results. The aim is to get nice results in the quickest possible time so that you can enjoy uh, the painting and then field uh, an army as well. So you're looking at maybe a 2000 point army, you don't want to be spending you know, weeks on just one minute, you want to be able to batch paint and get them on the tabletop, uh, but reach a nice standard, as you see here. So, as I said, I'm going to show you from start to finish, we're going to cover the uh, base here as well, we'll do basing, some materials there, I'm going to go through all the materials that you need in just a moment, uh, and then we'll take you through the stages. Now, this is slightly different to how I usually paint, uh, usually it's base colours, washes, final highlights, but the way this miniature is, I've worked on a couple of techniques that that change that a little bit, uh, but you'll see as we go along. But there it is. Uh, and then just also mention the colour scheme that you see here uh, it will be exactly the same colour scheme that I'll use on all of the Thousand Suns uh, units. So, whatever unit it may be, maybe a vehicle, something bigger, uh, whatever type of infantry unit or infantry or vehicle or monstrous creature, whatever it is, um, that's the same colour scheme. So, I'll, I'll try and keep as professional as I can. I've got a cold at the moment. Maybe you should have collected Nurgle. Uh, it may have been more appropriate because <laughs> I'm down with a cold, uh, but we'll we'll press on here. Uh, we'll cover materials uh, that you'll need now for this project. So uh, materials that you need, uh, we'll cover basic materials first of all. So I have two types of base materials. I won't show you how to do the basic in the in the video. Just sort of run through it here. Um, so I have some. Sort of medium sized stones and then some very fine stones just here, like so. Uh, I got these from a beach. I was on holiday and then uh, I was walking along the beach and I thought those stones would be perfect. It's, like, uh, it's not shells, it's like granite pieces, uh, all finely uh, broken up. It wasn't a sandy beach, the, 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 the beach was made up purely of this. There's no sand mixed in amongst there, it's perfect for basing. Uh, you may find that at a beach, at a lake somewhere. Uh, so look around, keep your eye out for those kind of materials, or you can just buy them. Um, I like to get the natural stuff because the stone's always random in size. If you buy it from somewhere like a hardware store or an aquarium, they do rocks and so on, it's all sieved and cleaned and the rocks often are pretty much the same size and looks too uniform. So natural is better, but if you can't, find, if you haven't got any access to that kind of thing, uh, their garden centres are a good place as well. Uh, to get hold of uh, your sand and rocks and so on. But if not, if you can't find any naturally, then that's the places that you can uh, purchase it from. 
that's that one. That's the coarse stuff. And then the finer sand here, which is regular uh, sharp sand I use, which comes with little stones and bits in it. And there's also some stones and bits mixed in there for when I've, I've tapped it off from here. So I put the miniatures in there first, tap off the excess and some stones fall there. And over time you gradually get little stones mixed in with the sand uh, just there. I think it's called sharp sand. It comes with little stones and bits in it. As long as I sieve it to get the bigger rocks and bits out and the shells and so on, it just leaves you with this finer stuff. So there's two, two uh, types of sand. And for the miniature, uh, PVA glue, which is known material here, uh, PVA polyvinyl acetate, um, multi-purpose adhesive and seal, that's great stuff. Use an old brush, paint it onto the base. This is before any spraying takes place. Uh, you've constructed the miniature, coat it onto the base, and then this one, I drop some stones on, as many or as little as I want, put them on, uh, and then finish off with this, put sand all over the top, tap it, and then the key point is to run your thumb around the edge and it just takes away any overhanging rocks and sand and it leaves it nice and neat. Then leave it to completely dry uh, and then the miniature will be ready for spray. But that's just the basing cupboard. I'll cover the other basing materials that you'll need uh, to finish off later on as well. Yeah, so other basing materials is these tufts, which are very popular now, tufts of uh, static grass, but it's sort of taller grass just there, you can buy them uniform size just here, smaller ones, and then uh, the person who's selling them on eBay uh, did a random set as well. I bought these from eBay, they actually came from Portugal, uh, the seller, but you can get them, they're sold, they're very common, you easily be able to get them off eBay, pretty much wherever you are in the world, you should be able to get a hold of these, no problem. Um, so, and then even if it's not based in your country, you can, they'll offer international postage, some of the sellers, you should be able to get a hold of these. Uh, just here. So these ones here, I've gone for the sand colour. So that's the shade just there. As you see it on the camera is, is the correct uh, colour rendering just there. So it's like a sandy, uh, it's not bleached cream. I wouldn't say it's as, as uh, light as that. It's more of a sand colour. And there's some brown strands in there. Uh, but that's that kind of shade. You don't have to take that shade if you want to go for a different colour uh, or even green or whatever you want to use um, but that will match this desert kind of theme a lot better so that's those for finishing off. Then also uh, we'll, cut, we'll do the basing, we'll put this on later on and show you how it's applied but dead grass I'm not sure if Games Workshop still produce they probably do uh, but it's that tub of static grass just there. If you can't get it from Games Workshop there'll be plenty of other companies out there that will sell dead grass and again you see it's the same kind of colour and that's all to match in with this rugged uh, basing here on this miniature. Uh, if you do want a full tutorial check out the regular channel uh, I do desert basing tutorial I'll show you how to base one of the Harlequins it's exactly the same process and materials so you can just copy that uh, if you want to walk through of how to do the uh, basing just there. That's basing, uh, then on to sprays. And this is the key point where you're going to save some time. There's a lot of gold in this, and what we're going to do is, is cover the gold first. We're going to paint the gold first, get it all washed and highlighted. And that's going to save you a load of time. So, picking out the gold, just going to get it done, uh, and then fill in the, uh, the rest of the miniature. So, uh, the under colour, the base colour around the base here. Uh, and the trim will be done for you, and that is Army Painter uh, Leather Brown, just here. So that was shade in the basing. It's a nice dark colour, it'll give you a nice trim, finished, just there. Uh, and then, you don't have to go over the whole miniature with it. I sort of sprayed around here and then just left the rest, it's not that important. But it goes quite well with the gold. So that's that Leather Brown by Army Painter. And the Games Workshop have produced Retributor Armour Spray, Gold Spray, which is perfect for these. So when this is the base is totally dry, you just cover it up with tissue as much as you can, making sure that no gold goes onto the base, uh, and then spray this Retributor armour uh, just there. And you pretty much cover most of it. I've sort of, uh, below the knees, I need to fill in with some gold, but the rest of the niche has been done. This is such a key point, it's going to save you loads of time. Uh, so having to paint gold and so on, um, the gold's 
keyed in for you and it's just the dominant one of the dominant colors uh, on this thousand suns marine all right so that's the sprays um the other spray is purity seal that'll be to finish it off you do have to be careful with purity seal if you go too heavy you can kill out your metallics and there's, there's loads of metallics the gold on this comes out nicely when you paint it if you go too heavy with purity seal you can lose the sheen and the shine so when you, we do come to spray later, it's going to be a very, very light coat of that. Very, very light. Almost like you, you feel you haven't given it a spray. It's just a very, very small amount that uh, goes on to finish them off. The washes should go on to the Retributes, no problem. Uh, if you find that you're struggling, the washes aren't going and they start to puddle, then give the miniature a, light, a very light coat of this, uh, covering all the areas, and then that will help the washes go on top. Just that you shouldn't have a problem with the Retributes arm, it should be fine. Right, so paints, there's a fair few here. A thousand suns, yeah, this is quite a, an intricate army to paint up, but they're expensive in points. You're not gonna be looking at a fast army, it's not gonna be a horde army. So you can uh, take the time to, to paint them up uh, nicely uh, and get them looking good. So, uh, Ceramite White, first of all. Uh, then you've got your Abaddon Black as well. Then I've been working on this. This is this is your choice, but Thousand Suns Blue for the armor. And in the set that you get here, they refer to Thousand Suns Blue for the armor, and then a layer of Araman Blue, which I went and bought both. But as I was practicing and painting up, the Araman Blue is quite bright, so. I don't, use, I don't use the Araman Blue, not in this uh, video, but if you want them slightly lighter, if you don't like the way these come out, if you think they're too dark, then by all means use the Araman Blue. But I was very happy with the Thousand Suns because we are going to highlight the edges anyway, that does lift the whole miniature up. The gold's very bright as well. The Thousand Suns Blue really, it's like the Ultramarine's Blue, it's the true colour. Um, so I'm going to stick with that one, the Thousand Suns Blue, and not use Araman Blue. But if you want a slightly lighter version, then use Araman Blue instead. So, Thousand Suns Blue, uh, then Flash gets yellow, uh, then Avalon Sunset, made, uh, that's the yellow that I used uh, in the Primary Space Marines as well. It's a nice colour, uh, that'll be the foundation, the base that we build up for our, our yellow uh, later on. Uh, then uh, Celestra Grey, it's quite an important one, that's for the cloaks uh, and the drapes that uh, hang down just here. Then uh, we have Screamer Pink. Use that for like the seals, uh, the gems, the base for the gems. And then also on the Sorcerer here, it'll be the cape here. I, I won't be painting that, but that's, that's your base color. Uh, that's washed, and then you're gonna uh, repaint it with this, and then highlight, just mix that with some white, and then uh, highlight that up. But that's the color uh, for things like that. Then uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. Then uh, Iron Breaker, Rune Fang Steel, uh, Shakti Bone. Uh, then this is an old one here, uh, Scorpion Green. It's Moot Green now. Just there, that'll be for the eyes. Uh, Blazing Orange. It's an old one. Uh, it's Troll Slayer Orange now is the new name. Uh, then uh, Burnished Gold is the old one. It's called Auric Armor Gold now is the new name. Uh, and then I've got an old Snot Green here. Uh, which is now called Warpstone Glow uh, is the new name for that. Then uh, there are some washes, uh, Bealtan Green, which you'll see how that's used a bit later on. Uh, then Agrax Earthshade, nice big one, let's get through quite a lot of that. And then the Seraphim Sepia uh, there as well. So, well, it's not too bad, it's a fair amount, but it's a nice palette of colours uh, that is on the miniature. You can see a lot of colours uh, to cover. Uh, just there. Right, so that's your paints, uh, and then obviously you're probably already set up for this, but just the usual uh, things that you need. A, a palette, which I use an old CD, uh, then uh, just a selection of brushes. I've got other brushes on standby just there. Uh, water available, it's already quite dirty from <laughs> other projects. Uh, and then that is uh, about it. So. Uh, what we'll do now is um, we will go on to the first stage here.
Okay, so uh, first thing I'm going to cover, I'm going to do the base first. It won't take very long. It's good to get that done uh, because you may flick onto the miniature uh, and then that needs to be repaired. So it's better to get the base done first. And I'm going to put washes on the base as well. Anyway, so uh, we're just going to take an older brush here. This one here is just, it's just a worn out wash brush. I'm just going to lick the bristles. Just put the bristles in my mouth there just to make it damp. It just helps the highlight flow better. And then I'm taking some of the shabti bone first of all. And then just onto here I'm just getting rid of the excess paint. And then you'll see that it should go on here pretty good. Just scrubbing it on. Not too fussed about the brush because it's an old one. Uh, as a tip as well for your hobby, your brush runs out, it looks terrible, you lose the point, don't throw it away, use it for rough stuff. I'm um, going to put a tiny bit of water on here, just to help this paint flow. For a dry brush you don't always need dry paint. Sometimes a little bit of wet helps it flow on. I'm just being careful about the edges, if you do get any on there, wet your thumb and then rub it off quickly. Okay, you don't have to repaint this trim. I've got a, I've made a mistake here. I've got it on the side. Just rub that off. Quick repair. See, I've got some on the shoe. If I'd have spent ages painting around there neatly, it would have been a shame to mess that up. So I'm just working my way around. Like so, I'm just scrubbing it in. Don't go too wet with your highlight, otherwise the paint will start flowing into the cracks. That's like that. And then, with the brush still with some of the shabti bone on it, I'm going to go to Ceramite White. A little bit of the bone comes through on the white, but that's fine. Take out excess paint. And then just skim that over the top. So that just lifts that. I'm just going to go there and a bit at the back and a bit on the side here. Like so, you know, I flicked a bit on the base here. Got to be quick. And that just comes off just there. Sometimes it needs a bit of a rub to get it away. Like that. Okay, that's sorted that out. Just means you don't have to come back to this trim or repaint it. You've just got the original spray. It's a nice coat on there. Um, so it'd be nice just to just to leave it as it is and not have to disturb it. But there he is, that's just lifted that base uh, just there. That's pretty much all there is to do to the base. Just put some inks on there and then later on right at the very end we'll add the flock and uh, static grass clumps. Right, I've then got uh, the burnished gold, the auric uh, gold just here. Now, auric armor gold just here. Now, what you can do is you see you, the brushes when you buy them they come with this tube. The tube's quite handy for holding the lid open I've found, so it's another little trick <laughs> that I like to do. So what we're going to do now is repair uh, around the feet, just the gold. Not worried about the actual uh, feet themselves because they're going to be blue. It's not fussed about that, but there is some gold trim around here that needs to be gold before we put the washes on. So just taking a just a general brush, this is a large brush, uh, just take some of the gold and then just work it onto the armor, just pat it out of the way. Just work it onto the armor, it matches the gold just nicely. Uh, the Retributor Armor Gold. So as I said, not going to be worried about the feet, but it's more this trim. You don't have to be neat, just try not to get it on the base, uh, but if it goes anywhere else, it's no problem. So just work that around there. If you want to be fussy, you can give the whole miniature a coat of the gold, but I can't see much point in doing that. If there's anywhere on the miniature where you've missed with the spray, then now's the time to get the gold done. But it should be just this trim that's around the feet. Then also, not forgetting the trim that's usually at the base of the garment that hangs down here as well. Front, sides and back. And just the trim underneath. Uh, the armoured plate there on the feet and just working it all the way around as I said now's the time to make sure you got it right just through the gap there I mean I've, I've tried to figure out a quicker way this is about as quick as I think you're going to get for painting these 
uh, this technique that you're going to see. So as I said, you, you can go for that. I'm not going to bother. You know, once your highlights and your washes are all done, it links together. You'd, you'd never notice that this is very slightly different. So, but that just tucks in there, just making sure I've got all that. So that's that finished. Right, so you've got to let that dry. It must dry. You can't go straight on the washes. Once that's completely dry, uh, give it 15 minutes, maybe a bit longer, uh, and then you're ready to put washes on top. Right, so I'm going to go into washes here. So I had some thoughts about this. What I'm going to do is going to compromise. I'm going to go half and half uh, here between uh, washes and filling in the colours. So I mean, you can do it a different order if you wish. So I'm just going to explain what I mean here. So what we're going to do is, you could do all of the gold and do all your final finishes and get to this kind of finish here with the highlights and the silver and so on. Then if you did it that way, you then have to fill in all the blue and then you have to put another wash on around the edges of all the blue. Then uh, the downside with that is you, you can get washes back onto your gold again and so on. It's just it's quite tricky doing it this way. So what I'm going to do uh, is to do a uh, seraphim sepia so wash over the whole thing, we'll do the base as well uh, over the whole thing and that will partly shade the armour in that colour then we're going to pick out the blue and then we're going to shade the blue uh, and the gold at the same time by using uh, a darker Agrax uh, uh, shade and then that will go over the whole thing and that will simultaneously shade the blue and it will shade uh, the gold at the same time, I think that's a better way of doing it uh, and then we can re-pick out the blue uh, and then do the gold as well, but that's the way I'm going to do it. You can change all of that around if you find it works better for you, um, but that's how we're going to do it here in this tutorial. It should work out fine, but anyway, first stage, just to give a wash uh, of this seraphim sepia over the whole of the miniature, so that's the next stage. So, uh, seraphim sepia here, got a nice big uh, wash brush, because you don't need to be neat, and that's just going to go over all of the army, you see it flooding in there, not worrying about if it goes onto areas that are going to be another colour. The key is just to get that uh, armour, the gold, all shaded in. So make sure you capture that. And then we'll shade the base at the same time. So I usually just do around the feet like this. Uh, a few patches here and there on the areas that you've already highlighted. But the, the main part is just to key in uh, the feet into the base. It really helps it to settle in uh, to the base just there. So again, run it around here. I usually go all the way around the feet and then just carry on up the rest of the miniatures, so just shading the legs. This is nice and quick this stage, uh, but it will give you a chunk of your shading done, especially for the gold. So I'm just going to work on the rest of this, just to get it all done. And as you can see, that's uh, sh shaded that in really nice. What we're going to do is let that dry completely, uh, and then uh, we will go on to the next stage, which will be to pick out some of these colours here, the blue, uh, black, silver we're going to pick out, before we put on another wash uh, that will shade everything. All right, so uh, wash is dried here. So we're going to pick out some of the colours, uh, and then we'll put another wash over the top. So the next colour is just going to be the Thousand Suns Blue. This is one that is going to take you a while. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, it's just that stage that has to be done. So standard brush with a nice tip, just here, uh, straight out of the pot. I usually keep a bit of water in there. Keep it water, keep it nice and flowing, and then it is all. Uh, embossed here, so you can just run the brush around up to the edge that they've defined for you. So it does help, you're not having to paint it freehand, you're just running it up to the edges uh, of where they've defined it for you. I've just put a bit on the gold there, it doesn't matter. So just working the paint into the gaps, doing the edges and then filling in like so. It's nice to keep the paint quite thin. Uh, so that it flows quite nicely, you don't want it going lumpy and then just filling in around up to the edges. You do want you do want to be neat here I encourage you to be as neat as you can uh, at this early stage. If you do get any on the gold I would say repair it as well just get it all completely neat. Just that, that's that pad done and then just follow uh, the artwork on the box is what I'm going to do, just fill in all the areas that are blue. I'm going to carry on here and then I'll show you what exactly where I've been uh, with this Thousand Suns Blue. It's, it's, it's a long stage, this one, uh, but it's, it's one of the main colours. The two main colours is the gold and the Thousand Suns Blue. If you get those done, the rest is just small bits uh, to add on. Alright, so uh, blue done. Uh, just show you where I've been. I've done the shoulder pads here. Uh, the crests I've picked out as well, you see them here, I picked quite a complicated one to paint. This one has that stripy pattern on his arms as well, I've picked that out also. 
uh, the areas I've left gold will become yellow later on. Then just between all the armour, remember we've got these plates here that rest across the fires. Uh, then there's the hands and the feet to paint and then the armour blocks around here as well. Just a little bit on the backpack, remember there's some stripes across there. Back of the headrest, anywhere where there's a recess really is usually blue. Uh, and then around here you can see uh, just on the fires there the different armour plates and so on. But there he is, it just gives you an idea of uh, how to paint them. Uh, just there with the blue. Now, I mean, I just follow the, the uh, guidelines that's on the artwork that you get uh, with the box. Uh, next colour is the Iron Breaker, and then for that you're just going to be painting up uh, it's mostly the uh, bolt gun here, uh, this bit in the middle, just there, like so, uh, and then uh, the other areas here, like the end of the bolter there, uh, the chamber along the top as well, is silver. I'm just going to go over this here to, uh, with the iron breaker and I'll show you where I've been. So that's that done, just along the top of the bolter there, uh, along the, the end, the uh, magazine cartridge there and the end of the bolt gun like so. And again just following the box, there's no silver anywhere else but it just gets that prepared ready for a wash to go over uh, the top. So there's some areas that we're not going to worry about, not going to worry about the cape here dangling down, we'll paint that later on, all the washes and so on are done. The eyes, not going to worry about them yet either. We'll do black next here, which features on the uh, bolt gun just there. So it's just the casing for the bolt gun, I'm just going to fill the whole thing in. There'll be a little bit of a technique to do later on to pick out those hieroglyphs that you can see etched onto it, but just working uh, the brush around in there and again just following the design that you've already been given that really helps with this uh, is just sort of filling in the gaps and then just making it neat running along the top just there like so and then I'll just repeat that on the other side so that's the black down there there's also the hand grip underneath uh, is black as well uh, and then just the black on both sides of the gun just a couple of those colours that we're picking up uh, once the black's done you can move on to scream of pink any uh, purity seal, it's not quite, don't really have purity seals, but you'll see them on some of the models. Don't think this one has them. Uh, but also the gems, it's like the eyes here. See the one on the uh, shoulder pad? We'll just fill that eye in with this screamer pink colour, ready for shading. Uh, just there. There's a couple of them. There's one just here. It's chest, and it's probably one on the other shoulder pad. Yeah, it's just there. They don't all have them. You just have to look around for them to find them. There's one just there as well. So uh, that's the Scream of Pink done, uh, just picking out those gems. Just check around on the model, you'll find them in different spots, but shoulder pads there. There is one at the back on the uh, back of the backpack just there as well. So that's that colour done. A uh, couple left to go. There's this bone colour to do uh, on one of these sort of animal skulls here on top of the helmet. We'll do that next with the Ashabti bone. So there's just one bit here for the Ashabti bone. It's just this skull that's down in the middle here. So just fill that in, and again, trying to be neat on this one. And a bit more. I will fill in the eye sockets because they'll get filled with ink later on. Just seeing if the scar goes around the back, it doesn't, so I'm just going to stop it uh, just there, but that's that bit done. Right, so next one, I think this is the last colour now before we put the, the next wash on, and that is to mix uh, the Abaddon Black and some Iron Breaker, about 50-50, just to make a really dark silver colour. And that's to fill in the gaps. Uh, you'll see it here, like the creases uh, in between the knees just there, uh, the elbows and on the hands as well. I'll show you just here. Take some Iron Breaker. So Abaddon Black, about 50-50, it makes a dark uh, kind of silver colour. You can just see it there. Add a little bit of water to it so it flows quite nicely. And then it's just here, you see that ribbed kind of effect, it's the same as regular Space Marines. I just fill that in uh, with this dark colour here. It's like a slight metallic feel to it, it's not pure black, which is quite strong, but it's like a deep metallic. I'm just filling the gaps. Uh, there's also just here at the hip and around. With it watered down, it flows in quite nicely. Then just there. If it starts to thicken up, just add a bit more water to your mix. And then also, you see these ribbed pipes here on the backpack? They need to be done as well. So just fill those in. And then on the opposite side as well, like so. And also there's these ribbed uh, bits here along the on his back. 
these like buckles that go all the way around. So just cover those, make sure you get the sides. And then on the same on the other side as well. Just fill those in. And you don't need to touch those, that's them finished and the wash will just don't go over the top and that'll be them complete. But I'll carry on here with this uh, colour. Alright, so that's that done. So it's just the creases there at the back of the legs, at the hips you'll see them. Sometimes where the, the uh, arm is bent as well, couldn't see any on this one. Sometimes if the hand is open as well, uh, you'll see an area to uh, fill in. And then just this ribbed uh, buckles that go all the way around the front and then also the back as well. That's that done, it needs to completely dry uh, and then we'll go on to this wash, it's going to go over the whole of the miniature, it's going to shade and tone down all of the gold and also all of the other colours as well. Right, so I've got the Agrax Earth Shade, it is a brown colour but it's very very dark so it's alright to colour uh, the other colours like the blue and so on. So it's just a shade of this, uh, again using the wash brush across the whole of the miniature, so you see it will shade nicely the Shabti Bone, it will shade the blue, uh, it will shade the armour, shade the black, the bolt gun, all of that as well. We'll tone the bolt gun down uh, as well a bit later on with some known oil uh, also uh, just to darken that down. Uh, but this will, this wash here goes over the whole of the miniature just here. Not worrying about the uh, the material that dangles down here, that'll be fine, we'll leave that. Uh, we'll sort that out later on, uh, but just over the whole of the miniature. Alright, so that's him done. I'm going to have to leave him to dry now, uh, so that will take a while. You don't want to start doing the highlights and so on until that's completely finished. But you see that's united the whole miniature there. Uh, so after this is completely dry, we'll do some nylon oil just to knock down the silver here uh, on the bolt gun. And then it'll be ready then uh, for picking out these colours. But you're approaching halfway here uh, with the project, so looking good so far. Right, so uh, there's one more bit of wash too, that's the known oil. And that's just to go over the, the bolter here, just to darken down the uh, silver colours. So just here, uh, into the ammo cartridge along the top. Make sure you get around the other side. And then make sure you fill in like the, the chamber here uh, on the uh, bolt gun just there. I've drilled out the end as well with a drill, make sure you fill that with the ink. Uh, just to blacken that out. Just like so, and then the cartridge on the other side, just like that. It's quite straightforward, that just darkens that down. Just there, we'll let that dry up, and that's totally dry up. Um, we'll uh, start picking out these colours. All right, so uh, we're on gold here. I've, I've been painting up the gold. I've just left a few bits to show you how it's done. Um, so we're picking out this colour at the moment. You can see how nicely it's brightened up uh, the miniature, and it glints just nice there. Just these shoulder pads here to finish off. So taking the sh shining gold, which uh, the, the new name for it is Gehenna's gold. So you take some of uh, that and then also uh, your rune fang steel. And then you're looking to mix the two into a lighter version of the gold. So uh, Gehenna's gold on here, just putting it on the palette. And then some rune fang steel, it's quite strong pigments. So you won't need as much of the rune fang steel. You're looking to make sort of a silvery kind of gold color. Just there, it's coming out all right on the camera. I'm just checking it here, that looks okay. And then you can add, adjust that, add more or less silver or gold as you see fit. And it's kind of a wet dry brush technique here. Uh, and then you just pull it across the armor, like so. And it just glints and highlights the top. Obviously, trying to be neat, you don't want the paint very dry. Otherwise, it's not going to give very good coverage just there. But that's come on quite nice. See the difference between that shoulder pad and that one. So I'm just running the brush sort of sideways, just sort of stroking the armor here and pulling that highlight along. I'm not really painting it on as such, but just dragging the brush across. If you do make a mistake, like a bit of the gold's gone in there, just take a finer brush, wet it, and then just scrub it out like so. It's not too big a deal. If you make a real big mess, just reshade it again uh, with your washes. So just running over that, like so. And that's the shoulder pads done. As I said, I've done the rest of the miniature here, so I'm just spinning around so you can see how he's coming out. It's a brilliant technique. It really lifts the gold uh, just there. So what you can do is take some of the Rune Fang Steel Pure as it is, and again, uh, keeping it a nice consistency 
And with that, just do an extreme highlight. So things like the very top of this crest, a little bit, a little bit maybe on here, on here, like the corners of the shoulder pads. Pick them out, and again, it just lifts that nicely. I'll flick it around and do the other corners. And then anywhere else, maybe a bit along the backpack here, a bit across the top, a little bit on the back of the legs. You just choose areas that you want to lift out a bit more. A bit of the shoulder pad here and here. And that looks pretty good. Maybe the knee, top of the knee pads here, yeah, it lifts quite nicely. And again, that just adds a bit more glint and a bit more sheen uh, to that goal. But that's that done. You can see what an impression that's made. And it's nice to get that part of the miniature done. It's the real focal point for these uh, Thousand Sons Rubik Marines. And just picking out a detail here, uh, the, the ribbed piping that runs along the side of the face. Not all of the helmets are the same, but this one has it. So just remember just to pick that out. Just there. So that's just using that, that mixture that we made up earlier on with the Iron Breaker and the uh, Abaddon Black. Uh, just, just I forgot about that bit. It's easily done, but it's, you know, you miss a bit, it's easily filled in, uh, even at this stage. Uh, and just also to mention with the gold, I've still got some wet here mixed up. I left some areas that are very, very fine. That's like the areas here, like on his arm. See, it's that ribbed gold. That was too fine for that larger brush. So I'm using this thinner brush just to pick those out and neaten them up. Now's the time to neaten them up, make them look good. If you do flick onto the blue, don't worry about it too much because you're going to uh, correct and tidy up the blue a bit later on anyway. So I'm just highlighting that bit. I'll go around and do the other side. Pick out the ribs. You don't have to pick out all of it, just the main bits and just correct it and get it looking good. Onto that. And again, I flicked a few bits onto the blue, but I'll correct that a bit later on. That's looking good. And there's also uh, this side part of the leg ribbed as well. So that was too fine for that larger brush to do. So I'll just use a thinner brush just to pick that out. I'm really happy that's come out. So I use, just to mention, I used a larger brush and I was making it quite flat as I was uh, getting the paint out of it and flattening it out there. It just means you're able to move around the miniature quite quick. If you go fine, you're tempted then to paint the detail on and that'll take you a lot, lot longer. If you just use the brush sideways, you sort of cover it a lot quicker. And you get quite good at doing it. If you're not that confident, then go down to a smaller brush and use that, but it will, it will take you longer uh, to get it looking good. But that's that finished. Uh, just there, the gold's done. We've corrected that little mistake just there. So now there's uh, little details to pick out. There's the yellow still to do, the gems, and then importantly, this blue, uh, this Thousand Suns blue armor to work on as well. Okay, so uh, for these gems then, you see them here. There's also one on his wrist, uh, on his forearm just there. There's one on the shoulder pads there, dotted about. We'll do one of them. We'll do this one here on the shoulder pad. Maybe zoom in a bit so you can see. So I'll maybe show you how to do this one. So I've going going for the uh, Wazdaka Red. Well, it's Evil Sun Scarlet. Evil Sun Scarlet just to warm the red up. And I'm going bottom right corner. About two thirds, like so, leaving the top left hand corner dark with that scream of pink and the washes that have gone over the top. And then I'm going over to the Troll Slayer Orange, just let this dry. Troll Slayer Orange, uh, bottom right hand corner, you just want a blob of it in there, and that lifts that out. You can really see that picks that colour out just nicely. Maybe dot a bit more on top, that's it. Let's just lift that. And then a dot of ceramite white in the dark patch, which is the top left hand corner. Take your time and dot it in, like so. And that's just created that little red gem. So easy as that. So the shading's already done, that's cream and pink, perfect colour. Um, if, if you wanted to save a bit of time, not be too fussy, just go straight in with blazing orange, blob in the right hand corner, and then a dot. And that just creates that gem effect. Doesn't take very long at all and just really does look good. I'll do the rest of these gems here on this marine. All right, so uh, that's the gems picked out. You can see the ones on the, uh, the forearm just there, shoulder pad. Uh, then here, 
and then just there in the middle of the backpack. So it's worth doing. That just gets that bit done. Uh, so next we can pick out the silver here uh, on the bolt gun. So that's just simply the uh, iron breaker and you're just picking out the metallics on there, it's all shaded for you. So you're just picking that out. Just that. And you do want to be neat with this one. So it's picked out quite nicely around the chamber of the gun, around the end of the gun, and around the other side. And then just the the butt or the the, the uh, it's not the butt of the gun, it's the handle of the gun where he's holding it with his hand just underneath there needs to be done as well. But that's that picked out. Doesn't take very long, it's not much to pick out. You can chip the black panelling here. I'm not going to on this one, I'm just going to leave that uh, as it is. There's not much black area anyway. So uh, that's that silver done. Right, so then I want to do, uh, if you see here, show it to you on here first of all. On the bolt guns, they have this kind of eerie glowing effect on the runes on the cover of the guns. You can see them just there. It's quite hard to do. The way I've worked around this is to take some ceramite white paint, put it onto your palette, and then mix it with some Bieltan green, the wash. Like so, you can see it there. So you get like a watery greeny, glowy, kind of white kind of colour. And then I paint it onto the gun. Like so. It fills in those gaps. And then with my finger, I wipe away as much as I can. I won't be able to wipe all of it away because uh, it's sort of embossed in there, but I about to take some of it away as much as I can. Uh, it's not too much. I'm just going to reinforce that a little bit because you want it to glow a fair bit. Then let that dry and it's a case of repainting over with the black uh, just to pick that out. But that's giving you that's that greeny kind of glow colour. You can go the other side of the, the bolter just there. It's harder to wipe away the excess. And it's not really it's not really going to be seen. So you can do it if you want. I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to do that side of the bolt gun unless you can see it, whatever pose he's holding, but that's not really going to be seen. So I'm just going to do that bit there. Uh, once that's dry, we'll sort of repaint over very carefully with black. So it is tricky to do this. And the ones that I've been practicing on, it's quite hard. So I'm taking a brush here, there's some black paint on it. I'm then painting it onto the palette to get rid of as much excess as I can. And then sideways with the brush. I'm just seeing if I can just skim over the top of this. It's working all right so far. It's worth just being very careful with this. Better just to gradually work on it. If you go too heavy, you'll fill in the gaps and the details. That's gone on quite well. Quite happy with that. I'm just going to try and strengthen it a little bit. OK, so I think pretty happy with that. So that's filled it up quite nice. The runes can be seen and yet that's still quite a solid black just on there. Okay so that's that done but that's the effect just there. It's quite quick uh, but be very careful. If you make a real mess of it just take more of the uh, watered down white with the green, go over the top of it again, let it dry and then have another go. Um, it's optional you don't have to go for that technique but that seems to have come out quite well. It's got that green kind of uh, hue to it. Right next is the eyes, you can see them there. So this one's optional, you can take the snot green and fill the eyes in. This is just for a nicer kind of finish. So being careful not to get any on the gold or to sort of flood the eye, you just want to reach the, the part that you're going to highlight. And then there, sometimes it's handy to paint one corner, spin the miniature around and then reach the other corner, like so. So that's greened out, like that. And then, that's optional, you can just go straight in 
uh, with the moot green or the old scorpion green if you want to but I've got that green glow inside there with the snot green and then you want it to reach just the back panel or the back part of the eye not the edges and the sides but just that part just paint out the whole thing uh, with the moot green just want these glowing green eyes that looks quite good I'm just going to dab it on there just to strengthen what I put on, yeah it looks ok, so see the eyes glowing like so, that would work probably alright just with the moot green but uh, I've gone for the, the snot green first of all uh, and then the moot green over the top, that's the eyes done Right, next is the yellow. I've painted a part here that's just straight on with yellow. You can see how stark that is. So what you can do is take the Avalon Sunset and put that on as a base coat first. Like so. You see that? It's a bit more sensible in colour. And then we'll put the yellow on top. Uh, the, uh, well, the flash gets yellow. But first of all it's the Avalon Sunset first of all, just to pick out the yellow areas, so that the shaded gold area, now going to lose that and it's going to become this uh, shaded yellow colour. This is where you do want to be neat. And again, if you do get some on the blue, it doesn't matter because you're going to be repainting that a bit later. Just going to go over this yellow here. This colour. Like so. Then once that's dry, you do then go for your yellow. And that just tones that. I think that's a lot more toned and, and shaded and sensible, so that's a lot better looking. Just there, I have got a little bit on the blue, but it doesn't matter, I'll correct that a bit later. A bit at the top to get put on, and that's that looking good. So that looks really nice. The yellow. Addition of the yellow to that really brightens that up, looking really good. And that'll balance out a bit more when you uh, paint the lighter tones on the blue. Then after that you take some white, ceramite white, mix it with a bit of the yellow. And we'll just get this about right here. I'll show you on the palette here, you can see it just blurred, it's this kind of 50-50 consistency. Get the brush to a nice tip and then I'm just going to highlight the the way this one's layered, it's the bottom line like so, so bottom line, you'd maybe hardly notice it but just lift that yellow a little bit, just there so there's the comparison, right hand side not done, left hand side done I think the yellow is fantastic, don't go too heavy with the white else you'll change it from yellow to sort of more of a, a chalky colour, you don't want that to happen, you want to keep that, the strength of that yellow just there, but it does look really nice. Um, so there's the rest of this crest to do, so exactly the same process on his forearm here, has that stripy pattern side of the leg here uh, to do as well, just there. So we'll get all of those done and we'll show you uh, how that comes out. Right, so that's that yellow picked out, you can see it just there, and uh, then on the side, some on the backpack to do a little bit, and then you see the arm, forearm on both sides. There's a fair amount to do on this one, but quite happy with how that's come out. And that should look even better once the blue uh, is done and highlighted as well. The idea with the highlights is whichever part of the miniature you're painting, um, I don't want to paint, see, for example, on the shoulder pad here, I don't want to paint a highlight all the way around the blue here. I just want to paint the, the top part or where uh, the light would catch the miniature. So for the shoulder pad, it would be the top part. Uh, for here, with it ribbed, uh, it's just the lower part, just uh, just there. Uh, so you're not looking to capture all the area. If you highlight the whole way around something, it looks like it's evenly lit. You want something where the light is coming down, so you want to catch the highlight above. Uh, you'll see that more uh, illustrated when we do the highlighting uh, there for the Thousand Suns Blue. The miniature's coming along really well here, picking out a number of the smaller, uh, more annoying details to get done, uh, and then. Uh, we're getting close actually to, to doing well to uh, getting this miniature finished, so it's good progress so far. Right, so we'll do this this cloak next, uh, just here. So you're just looking to fill it in with the Celestra Grey. It's a really nice colour. Not worrying about shading at the moment, just looking to fill it out, and then we'll shade it separately 
uh, in just a moment. So neatly uh, out to where the gold is, just there, filling that in. Like so. And then again, we'll, we'll shade that uh, in just a moment once that's all dry. Just fill in the celestial grey in. Uh, keep it nice and watered down, nice flow to it, don't it lumpy. That's a real nice colour that, we'll, we'll get the rest of this clue done. Alright, so uh, that's the colour field out there, it's dry now, uh, just working all the way up. Sometimes there's these plumes uh, and extra bits to paint as well, I'll just check the reference uh, on the box for that. For example, here on the saucer here, he needs to have that painted as well. Um, so then around behind, don't forget behind, and then the sides as well. And once that's totally dry, use your Drakenhof Nightshade just to give that a wash over the top, like so. The key area is to shade it where it joins the gold, like so. And in between the cracks and crevices, uh, just there. And then just nice even strokes of the brush. I want it quite even and neat. That looks good, ready for uh, repainting. And then uh, just up above, just up in there, and then just where it meets the gold, just there. Just fill in a bit more. Like so. Not going on to the gold because that's already been hi highlighted and picked out. But there it is. That's looking pretty good. So we'll let that dry, uh, and then we'll repaint and neaten that up and then a highlight over the top. It's worth working on that. It's nice to have a, an area that's blocked out. It's not gold now, it's changed to a nice color. It's worth getting that Celestra Grey. Uh, it's a unique one, they recommend it on the back of the box. It's quite hard to mix up yourself. It's sort of a unique color. It's perfect here. Uh, it's a very really nice color to accompany. Uh, it's like Egyptian linen kind of color uh, there, just for them, but that's that shaded. Once that's dry, we'll, we'll pick that color out again. Right, so once that wash is dry, uh, you're then looking just to repaint the Celestra Grey on there and being neat this time, and then leaving the areas where it's shaded, uh, just leave that with the wash just in there. So if I start to pick it out, most of the garment you're going to pick out, it's the main recesses and creases that you're going to leave shaded uh, there with the Dragon Off Nightshade. And then just being really neat now, as we go around the area where the gold meets the cloth, like so, that's looking, that's looking nice. You can see that highlighting and shading starting to take place. Just going to run it down the edge here. And this model has a couple of extra bits of linen dangling down here, so I'll do those, like so. Just working the brush up. Using your brush strokes to go down the length is a lot better. I do want to catch the sides, but again being careful not to go on the gold. Up the side here. And then when it dries you can give it a second coat. Just to give it a nice finish. Just there. So, you see that? It's looking pretty good. I'm going to do a little bit down here. Just to pick out some. That was pretty happy with how it looks. Add, and then just around the back in here. And again, it's going to be most of this that I'm going to be picking out because there's no real strong folds and creases on the back here. And then just being neat where it meets the linen meets the gold. This is the time to get it right. So just tucking that in there. Like so. Just gonna strengthen that, put another coat on. Like that. And that's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that. That looks nice and neat. Right then to strengthen that highlight, or to strengthen that colour. Uh, to add a highlight in, I'm just taking 50-50, mixing the Celestra Grey with a bit of white, Ceramite white, don't too much paint on the brush, and then just the extreme edges, so the very edge of the cloth here I'm going to do, on both sides, 
see that it's just catching that there uh, the edges of this cloth dangling down like so and then I may just catch the edge here of the garment where the main crease is running down like so and then just run that down a bit further that's quite nice that's come out pretty good just there and then behind uh, maybe just the fold there's a fold here on the right hand side and there's a fold on the left hand side just see in just a moment just going to catch that with the lighter mix just like that pretty happy with that it's a lovely color um, so that's that bit done Right, so now we're going to do Thousand Suns Blue. We've pretty much done all the intricate bits on this model. It's just the blue left to do. So we really are making really good progress. So this one's going to uh, pick out this blue here. It's quite dirty at the moment. Remember, it's got that um, Agrax Earth shade over the top. It's been neglected. We haven't covered it yet. Miniature does look good, uh, but this blue is really going to lift the model up. It's going to be quite some change when that's done. So Thousand Suns Blue. And then the paints... I've had it for a while. It's thickened up a little bit. So I just take... Uh, you dip your finger in water and it holds one drip and then I just let a couple of drips go in so just add a few drips of water, this is just maintaining your paints so I'm adding some drips there close it up, give it a shake and it should start to sound nice, sort of liquid feel to it and if I open it the paint should flow it's not really flowing too well so I'm going to add some more water it should flow from the, from the cap back into the uh, paint tub quite nicely and that means it's a nice flow a good flowing paint makes all the difference so just going to give that another shake that sounds a lot better it helps you it helps stop cloggy paint uh, when you're painting and it starts to dry and it clogs up on the actual miniature it looks horrible if you want a nice smooth finish then a thinned paint uh, works a lot better you can go for uh, special thinners uh, for paints which works okay, water's fine and that is going onto the brush yeah just nice, so I'm going to show you this shoulder pad here simple case of putting the paint back on and then being careful you're leaving the edges that uh, just shaded so you see that blue really lifting out just there and then it's not cloggy at all, it's really going on nice and smooth onto the miniature which is exactly what you want it goes on just there, so there's that shoulder pad, you see it? compared to that one so it's the same process, you want a nice uh, good flow to the paint nice sharp tip on your brush uh, and then you're just picking out all of the armour uh, the blue parts and then leaving uh, the creases and the folds and the gaps shaded just there, we're just picking everything out. Uh, when it's dry, I'll look at it, may well give it a second coat just on the shoulder pad just to strengthen it, uh, but you can judge that as you go along. So I'm going to paint the rest of the blue now uh, on this miniature. Alright, so uh, Thousand Suns Blue done, just picking out uh, all the panels again, uh, just going nice and neat, going up to the edges, uh, just there and leaving the shading in the cracks just there. It unites the whole model now, looks really good. I've also started doing the highlights here, you can see it on uh, the back, just picking out the top edge. So I'm going to do a bit of that now and um, show you uh, how that works. So this is the colour I'm after here, it's like a lighter version of the Thousand Suns Blue. It's quite easy, just take some Ceramite White and then some Thousand Suns Blue. I don't want to go too strong highlight here, we may do a small sort of extreme edge highlight, I'm adding a bit of water to this mix as well so I'm going to go for quite a watered down version because that flows off the brush nicely and then I'm going to get a nice tip here with the brush don't want too much paint, don't want to flood it on so I'm just working the paint out so that's a very nice flow to that colour and we'll go Let's say top of the shoulder pad here. So I don't want to. I don't want to highlight. You can highlight all the way around, but to save time and also just to give the impression of the light coming down in that direction, I'm just going to highlight the sort of the top. 
So around to about there and then just fade it off. And it just lifts that going along the top. And again, this is fended down here and that just lets the paint flow nicely and keeps it nice and sharp, keeps the tip of your brush nice and sharp. Which is what's happened here, I'm just needing up this line. Like so. We should be able to see it just there. Uh, and that's it, then I'll repeat that on the other side then for things like the helmet. Um, again, just going to add a bit more paint and then make sure it's thinned out. Here, a nice sharp tip, uh, just in between the mouth. That edge can be picked out on one and two sides. Uh, then you can see where I'm going now, just here. That tubing that runs along either side of the face. A little bracket that sticks out, just picking that out. Then, of course, I'll show you here. Uh, on this. I'm going to go bottom highlight along here because it's it's like the slats on a roof here so I'm just picking up the bottom a bit like so and you can see how that lifts that out so we'll go on to the other one go nice and neat but a nice sharp tip on the brush but that's been done by keeping the paint thinned down quite nicely but that's picking that out quite nicely the difference between the left hand side and the right hand side I'm trying to pick out a little bit there, just a little bit, that's fine. There, a little bit underneath here to do. Being careful not to go on the gold. Let's roll the miniature around and then catch it on the other side. So, that's quite noticeable there. That looks pretty good. That looks really nice. Okay. So, um, I could tuck up the sides of the panels like so. Just touch that in as well. Like that. Yeah, looks fine. Okay. So, I'm just going to keep going around the rest of the model here. Uh, and then things like here, look, this bit around the throat that sticks out. That highlight can run all the way around. Just there. It really lifts the blue, gives it a nice crisp edge and does lighten the miniature. As I said, the Thousand Suns Blue is quite dark, uh, but that highlight helps to lift it out uh, from the miniature. All right, so that's the highlights done. Really happy with those come out here. It's looking really good. Highlights just not nicely, uh, just add a little bit of crispness to that color and then lifts that blue. I'm taking a bit more white here. Gonna make an even lighter version. You don't have to do this. Um, it's not really needed, but any extreme edge highlights that you want to do, maybe, and again, thin down paint. Maybe just the tips of his feet, that's probably a bit too bright, that colour. So I'm going to add some Thousand Suns blue. Anywhere where an extreme highlight you think should go, so the very tip of the foot there. Okay, it's just a slightly brighter shade. The extreme corner of this hand. Tips of these fingers. The bit around the throat there, that piece that sticks out. Uh, the very, very top of the shoulder pad. Can be picked out as well, just to lift that. A little bit like so you'd hardly notice it it's probably not worth doing um, and then just looking around to see if there's anywhere else not really okay so what I've done is picked out the top highlight that say runs along here but not down here it's the shady bit uh, and then the top highlight just there it's just enough I think to lift it if you go all the way around, it's a lot of painstaking work, you're, you're going to double the time it takes you to do it. So I just pick out the top parts as illustrated here on the shoulder pad. You can see the top part going around and the bottom half I just leave. And that seems to be just enough to lift him up. He's bright enough, I think. Looking pretty good. So then uh, a shabty bone. Just to pick out this skull that's just up here. 
like so. Uh, and then some Shabti bone mixed with white, just to flick on a final colour onto there. It's easy enough. Like so. So that's that done. All right. So that really is the miniature done. It's looking pretty much finished here. Um, so I don't do any weathering as such. I want these to look quite crisp and clean, uh, like they're unnaturally preserved. Just that kind of theme I'm going to have. We're not going to do any chipping effects or weathering. Uh, they're so intricate anyway, and, and the, the inks and effects you've done on the gold I think is enough. So if I start adding chipping and so on, I think it's too much. You start to overload the miniature with too much detail. So just fine as it is. Really happy with how that's come out. Um, so we'll just talk about transfers uh, next. So you'll see here on the, it's a bit annoying really because there's a lot here on these images, like here for example, and then uh, for the shoulder pads, there's this one here, which you do get as a transfer, uh, but there's also other runes and symbols, you can't just about see it on the edge there, it's not really too visible here. You can see it just there. The problem is, is a lot of that doesn't come with the transfer sheet that you get in the box. Anyone that's really available is uh, this Thousand Suns symbol just here, and the rest uh, isn't to be found. That kind of symbol there uh, that needs to go on the, the garment that, that hangs down, it's not available small, so. Um, what you can do then is paint freehand. I sort of looked at these, I'm pretty much happy to have uh, that piece of cloth just plain and just with the effects and the highlights on there. So I'm just going to leave it as it is uh, and then I'll, maybe I'll keep a look out for those uh, transfers from somewhere else. But I'm going to show you how to do one of the transfers and that's the Thousand Suns uh, symbol. We'll put that on one of the shoulder pads uh, next. Okay, so I'm just going to take one of these. Now it's tricky to do this one because it's a it's a design going, up, going onto a rounded shoulder pad. So it's not going to be easy to do, but I'm going to take out one of these thousand sun symbols from the standard transfer sheet. Maybe Forge Weld or other Games Workshop kits. Probably Forge Weld may, may well do a better set. Um, but for now, I'll just illustrate with this one. It'll be the same technique for whatever transfers you use. I'm just going to dip it into water there, uh, like so, and just let it rest on the palette to come loose. Then I'm going to take a bit of PVA glue, same glue you use for your basing, and just put a dot of that on the palette. And then with a pretty stiff brush, just going to use this one here. Just going to see if the transfer is loose yet. Can't do too much until that's ready to go. So we'll just wait on that. I'm going to add a bit more water to it. Just let that soak through. Okay, so that is loose now. So you've got to be careful. We're going to take a bit of moisture out of the brush. I'm going to take some PVA glue, apply it to the shoulder pad. A little watered down PVA glue that's just sitting there. And then carefully remove the transfer with the brush. So here it is. Place it onto the miniature. And then it's hard to see, but it's creased just there. It's in about the right spot. So what I do is take a sharp knife and then I just roll a few of the edges, splitting the transfer. And it'll encourage it to sit flat. So I don't want to do too many. And I don't want to put slits all the way across the transfer, but just at a few key points. It's sort of moved a little bit whilst I've cut it, so just with the tip of the knife. Again, you've got to be careful, you can easily split the transfer. I'm just trying to reposition it here. It's looking better. And then with a brush, I'm just going to try and work the transfer to go flat. The slits here helping it do that. seems to be working. So I'm going to lose the excess liquid as the brush absorbs the spare liquid as it's pushed out from underneath the transfer. 
So the PVA will help the transfer go down, uh, and then when it dries, it will stop that hazy effect that you get with transfers sometimes, uh, that ghosty kind of effect behind the transfer uh, when it dries. That PVA will help stop that. It will also help hold the transfer in position, so it's multiple uses. That seems to have gone on okay, like so. So there's the transfer, just on there, it's looking good. Yeah, so that's dried on there, and you see there's no ghosting behind that, and pretty happy with that, that's come out quite well. So that's, it's risky doing it, you've got to have a nice uh, sharp edge with your knife as you roll it around. Remember, you don't want to split the whole transfer, you just want to sort of split um, just the edges and then it just helps it flatten down uh, and overlap around that curved edge but that's on there be careful not to touch it uh, we want to get the varnish on top to help lock that in and protect it before we come to that we'll finish the base off there so for the base I've got some of my uh, static grass here I've got this uh, dead grass here from his workshop and then I'm just gonna add a bit more PVA glue so I'll just zoom out here a little bit. So I'm going to take one of these, pull it off, this little clump, and then I'm going to dip it. Put these on first. I've dipped it into the PVA glue and I'm going to put it just here. Just sort of plant it like so. And then I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to use a, a brush here, take some PVA glue and then around it, because I think there'll be some grass growing, some shorter grass growing around it, just going to add a few more patches and then just sort of scrub the brush sort of randomly and a few patches around the base maybe do one bit just next to the feet, just there and then we'll dip that in here so I'll just sprinkle on some dead grass like so, tapping it's good, it helps the static grass stand up and it saves you wasting a lot of, of uh, grass as well then once that's on, I'm then going to blow it blow all of the excess uh, grass away and then just with my thumb wipe off the spare, push up any grass that's on the edge like so yeah, because I've tapped that, that grass has moved away quite well, so sort of standing up quite nicely, that's looking pretty good, just that. Right, so that's the grass on there, I think it looks really cool, and again, just follow the, the same, it's the same tutorial you see on the regular channel for desert basing, uh, so that's that done, and then once that glue, well you can spray before the glue dries, doesn't really matter, we're going to spray uh, next with the Purity Seal uh, Matte Varnish, and that'll protect the transfer, it'll lock everything in, you want to go very, very light with it. It's just a small amount, very, very small amount. Keep your distance. The last thing you want to do is flood that with varnish. So really caution you. Maybe just do very, very light coats indeed. Uh, and you literally think that you haven't hardly contacted the model. But it's a very fine mist and you, you will have uh, given it a light coat. So just hold off. Be very, very careful just to, so that you don't spoil uh, the miniatures because there's so much metallics on here. You don't want to make it go all heavy matte and it destroys the gold effect that you have so purity seal coat on this miniature next all right so purity seal has gone on a very very light misting that was a very very light coat indeed um, and that's protected that metallic so that's come out quite good so uh, happy with the results here so there he is thousand suns uh, rubik chaos space marine so I've got a number of others on the go at the moment that's well, it's a squad of 10, so they're at various stages uh, just to show you the same technique being applied these ones here is working on the gold uh, has been done for them, we've got the details to pick out I'll show you a few others some work to do on this icon of flame, I'll just copy the artwork on the box uh, this one's pretty much done pretty happy with how he's come out as well, but squad of 10 uh, same technique that you see here, you can apply to all of the uh, different Thousand Suns miniatures and indeed other Chaos Space Marine units and vehicles just use exactly the same technique if you're going to use them because uh, Thousand Suns have got access to uh, regular Chaos Space Marine uh, units and vehicles so uh, that's the painted tutorial then for the Secret Army really excited about these and it's such an iconic 
uh, and striking colour scheme uh, for these and it's great to have chaos represented uh, on the channels now so there it is that's the uh, painted tutorial for the secret project for thousand suns uh, chaos space marines uh, leave your comments and feedback got any questions as well then by all means leave that in the comment section uh, here on the plus channel and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and help you out as you paint these up and, and remember you may not be collecting these but you like the technique and the colour scheme and just apply it to something else maybe a space marine chapter for example or imperial guard uh, by all means use it for that or change the colours around keep the gold maybe change the blue to a red something like that and apply the technique um, and use it that way as well but there it is that's the video thanks for watching and tune in next time